Folks, we appreciate you all being here tonight. We invited uh, uh, folks uh, to come uh, share uh, with the Fairfield County Commissioners and others, who I'll get to in just a second, uh, your questions, your comments, and your concerns. Um, we've got uh, representatives here tonight. Uh, State Representative Hayes is here. Senator Balderson is here. Representative from United States Congressman Stiver's office is here. Representative from uh, United States Senator Portman's office is here. Uh, I think uh, State Representative Schaefer is en route. He was having uh, some trouble getting out of a hearing in Columbus. Um, what we thought, and, and if I'm, and I'm going to miss a bunch of people, and I don't mean it that way at all, but uh, I think I saw just about every uh, Perry County Commissioner here this evening. I see President Bubb and the Licking County Commissioners are here with us this evening. We appreciate them being here. Um, just a couple seconds on background, if I might, how we got here. On Tuesday, I believe it was the 10th of March. If I got the date wrong, I apologize. Uh, we were having our regular meeting and we had gotten some indications that the core report that would be released on Wednesday the 11th might be rather dramatic. And so we, uh, uh, anticipating that possible issue, uh, scheduled a uh, special meeting for the 12th, which was Thursday morning, invited ODNR to attend that meeting. And uh, that was, a, uh, like I say, kind of an add-on meeting. We had that out at the utilities office. Didn't really invite the public, but nonetheless, 80 folks came to see us that morning. Uh, we didn't have seating for everybody, like we don't tonight. We thought we would. Um, but uh, that gave us an indication of concern that we thought uh, we should be more responsive to. I had the opportunity over the last couple of days uh, to speak directly with uh, Director Zeringer and uh, asked if uh, ODNR could be present here this evening. Uh, and they do have a couple of representatives with us this evening, which we really appreciate. Um, Stephanie Lice, Lise, Lise, I'm sorry, Stephanie. And, and Rodney Tor Tornas, Torn are you just being nice to me? Okay, all right. <laughs> You're starting off being nice to me. But anyway, just a little bit on format, if I might. What all these uh, politicians and representatives from these political offices, offices and ODNR, what we're supposed to be doing here tonight is listening to you. Uh, if you've read the core report, uh, you know that in section 5.4, the final recommendation before any decisions are made was to listen to the community, listen to the residents and the business owners and those who would be affected by the decisions that may, are made on Buckeye Lake. That's in the core report that we're supposed to listen. And so that's what we intend to do. From a format standpoint, we've got this microphone over here to my left, which is hot. If you would like to address the commission, all these politicos that have gathered here to listen to you, uh, ODNR included, uh, we would ask that you begin by approaching that podium and stating your name and residential address, and then state your question, your comment, your concern. It's difficult to have a meeting of this size and to manage it well. So a couple of rules if you would. Please direct your comments to the commissioners as opposed to to each other or, or to others in attendance. It would be very much appreciated. That's meant to kind of keep the temperature down a little bit if we could. I'm going to ask you to, if you would please, to try to abide by a three minute guideline for your remarks. If you get cut off as a result of that guideline, you'll be given an opportunity to reappear and extend your remarks. Uh, once everybody who wishes to speak has been given the opportunity to do so. Uh, we are not on the clock. Uh, we're here to listen uh, about the questions, the comments, the concerns. I think some of the things that might be most prudent uh, for folks to hear is what some of the immediate effects on the lake have been merely as a result of the announcement. Additionally, I know many of you are aware from reading the core report that there are a multitude of potential risk reduction alternatives. Uh, what your concerns might be about the implementation of some of those different risk reduction alternatives would probably be helpful uh, for this assembly of politicians and leaders to hear from you about. Those are just my thoughts. Those are not to restrict your comments in any way, shape, or form. So uh, that's kind of the setup. Um, We've just a couple of notes too. 
I know there are some cameras back here from the media outlets, but at the same time, uh, where's my friend Bob Competti? He's set up, yes. He is already set up. All right, well, anyway, we've got a videographer that we've hired for the evening to record the entire night, uh, so this will be preserved in that regard. We also have a stenographer who will be taking down all the questions, comments, and concerns that come from the public. I also wanted to mention, too, that while we very much appreciate the representatives from ODNR being willing to be here tonight and to listen, they're also on a bit of a schedule. Uh, so at 9 or 9.15 or so or something like that, they may leave. Uh, that's fine. We understand that. And we also understand if this meeting were to exceed that time frame, we will make sure that they get the video and, and the uh, um, transcript of what transpired so all the questions comments and concerns uh, that are derived from this meeting are, 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 are given to them one final thing I want to apologize for those who are standing room only and I want to apologize for having the meeting in Lancaster and I want you to understand why that was when it became apparent to us that a meeting was needed needed because we needed to have your input before decisions are made not after this is the largest meeting room that Fairfield County had control of and for immediacy and getting the meeting scheduled and set up and promoted, that's why we did that. It wasn't to make you drive or to, to be rude in any way. Uh, we're trying to be helpful. So uh, we, we really appreciate you all coming out tonight and don't be shy. We'll start right here at the podium to my left and I'll invite the first person who would like to address the Commission and the Assembly of Leaders tonight with your questions, your comments, or concerns. And if I could remind you, sir, to please begin by stating your name and residential address. Thank you. My name is Chuck Olson. My residence is 4471 North Bank Road, which is the last house in Fairfield County, right next to Licking County. Um, one comment is, is I think draining the lake permanently is not a solution that anybody wants. My other comment is, is that whatever we decide on, let's please not drag this out for years. Let's get it done so we can get over the financial impact and recover our property values. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to address the commission? Ray Bauman. I live on Moon River Lane, Edgewater Beach, which is Licking County. Um, I would like to hear from DNR if it would be possible to get an additional three feet in the lake if the community was to get together, put together a volunteer dam monitor monitoring force to patrol North Bank Dam and Embankment and West Bank Dam and Embankment. and report on conditions found to a coordinator from DNR or from another entity sanctioned by the state so as to limit the liability and have these volunteers patrol the bank once or twice a day in teams of two from the residents that live along there so we don't have a lot of movement in and out and so that the people whose properties are being patrolled understand that these are their neighbors that are helping to add a little bit more water into the lake to make it more navigable to lessen the impact why the decisions are being made currently the lake is not at winter pool it is approximately a foot to 16 inches above winter pool based upon measurements at my end of the lake we would i believe we can find enough interest from the residents of North Bank and the residents all the way around the lake to put together this force. It'll take a conscientious effort to do it. It'll take a conscientious effort by DNR to help us limit the liability of the people that are doing it. And it'll take a great effort to train these adult people in doing this. Each team will have to have a backup or two to it. So, and we have to limit the distances that they travel so that it's not an undue burden on them. That's an idea of how to temporarily put water in the lake till the decisions are made and we know what's going on. The other question that I have is are there any 
it, mitigation efforts are ways that we can lessen the stress on the dam other than dropping the water level or keeping it at winter pool? Do we have to remove docks? Do we have to remove sidewalks? Do we have to remove decks? Do we have to remove anything, including the trees? Granted, no matter which way they build this thing, the trees are gone. No, no dam in the country has trees growing on it. And I don't think we want to be the first one. Thank you, sir. Sir, please spell your last name for me. B is in boy, A-U-M-A-N. My name is Karen Cookston. I live at 113 Anchors Way, which is a Cranberry Bay edition. I also wear the hat of the Planning and Zoning um, Commissioner or Officer at Buckeye Lake. Um, one of the things that I'm concerned about is the potential unintended consequences of not making this decision quickly as to what potential ability we have to make corrections. As the last gentleman identified is that at winter levels, we have the potential at our evaporation rate of our lake in July and August to lose anywhere from one to four feet. With that being said, with a shallower lake, that's going to happen sooner. If that occurs in August, we are going to lose our lily pads, we're going to use, lose our bird sanctuaries, we're going to lose all the finger issues, and with that being said, the lake is probably not going to be able to recover its ecosystem from that standpoint. So in my opinion, the time frame of, of how we all work together to get this done is incredibly important. On a separate note, as the chair, as, as a chairperson of the Planning Commission, my phone is ringing off the hook from literally bank presidents all the way down asking questions about currently pending loans, values of homes. As a matter of fact, my house was being appraised on Wednesday when we made this announcement. My home's appraisal that came back today is on hold and they're actually taking over $75,000 off the value of my house that was appraised five years ago. So the, the impact of people waiting to make decisions and those kinds of things greatly affects, again, not only the ecosystem, but the economic system. And clearly we all know lives are important. And I think everybody in this room is willing to be part of the solution. I, and I appreciate you having this meeting tonight, but I think we all need to look at how do we work together for the solution and, and not let it drag out too long because we only have a couple more weeks of good rains. And trust me, in July, I don't think anybody are turning their hoses on to fill the lake to, to manage that space. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Ronald Bonnett, B-O-N-N-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. I'm a resident of uh, Canals on Buckeye Lake, Northern Perry County. First thing I want to do, I want to express my appreciation to all the uh, public officials who have attended tonight, who have listened to my calls, uh, of uh, specifically uh, Perry County Commissioners, uh, Mr. O'Brien, uh, Steve Stiver's office, the governor's office. They have really listened. ODNR had some talking points, but at least they listened. And uh, what I want to point out is the immediate impact. Nobody here wants anyone downstream to be flooded out or killed as a result of the dam bursting. Uh, I was part of the uh, family back in the Shadyside floods. Flooding is not a good thing. However, I'm immediately impacted and all my neighbors are. First thing is winter pool, the canals I'm on in northern Perry County dry up or they have so very little water in there you can't even get a kayak or canoe on it. My immediate concern is here, I got watercraft that are stranded in the boathouse or on the dock. I can't get them out. Uh, if ODNR is correct, then uh, assuming that they even fill it in, if it's going to take 18 to 24 months to design, which I don't understand why they don't have a design if they've known about this for 20 years, but uh, yeah. then it's going to be another three to five years to build it, and I understand it's going to take that long. It really is. I mean, I, they're not fooling fooling me by you know saying that or trying to fool us the question is what's going to happen over seven years we have without the lake I have a mud puddle in my backyard right now I have a second investment house up in uh, uh, Thornport I was trying to better the neighborhood fix the house up the house value just the lady just spoke to me says dropped bottom dropped out they don't know how they're going to praise it 
Uh, right now, speculation, house values have dropped. So ODNR has created a problem for those of us who are out there, not to mention that a lot of people are going to take their money and run. That's going to affect all the businesses around. It's going to take the neighborhood. If you're going to say 25 cents on a dollar, what kind of people are you going to get in there to put reinvestment back into place? You know, there's a lot of impacts, and I'm asking ODNR to address that issue and the governor's office to address that issue for those of us who are immediately impacted. Okay, understand, you can't flood people downstream. But what about those of us who are in this room and around me, my neighbors, and economic development, everyone in the state of Ohio, or even the nation who enjoy Buckeye Lake or have enjoyed Buckeye Lake or could enjoy Buckeye Lake? You know, what are you going to do about that? Because now we're impacted. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, I'm Dean Severance. I'm the mayor of the village of. Oh, I'm Dean Severance. I'm the mayor of the village of Millersport, and uh, I'm here on behalf of the entire community, our businesses. One of the concerns I have is what is going to happen to Cranberry Bog. You know, Cranberry Bog is a natural uh, treasure that we have in, on our lake, and one of the concerns that I have, and I know other people do too, is what is going to uh, be done to try to preserve that. Is there a way that they can preserve that? regardless of what happens. And the other thing is, my son works with uh, situations like this all the time, and he was asking me tonight, have they considered what they call soldier peers that they can put in uh, in, uh, in order to shore up, they do it for construction all the time, to shore up things so they can go in and actually do the work when the water is still in the lake and not to allow the lake just to drop down, but maybe there's, as one of the alternatives, that could be uh, brought forth um, to help assist with that. And uh, I don't have a, a business on the lake, but I have a lot of friends that do, and I'm very concerned for their welfare and their well-being. So I think that uh, everybody here is, is in the same boat, if you will. So thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Hello, Patty D. Bruin, 3635. Blacklick Eastern Road in Millersport. I want to D E capital B R U I N. So uh, thank you, County Commissioners, representatives, other officials. I'm glad you're here. It shows you care. It shows you're concerned about Buckeye Ocean. But thank you, members of the audience, for speaking about the place that we call home. My husband's president of the Buckeye Lake for Tomorrow Association, and that has increased my knowledge about what's going on. Um, it's, it's let me know that there are a lot of different facets about this, but our lives have been dedicated to raising our family in Millersport and serving the community for 32 years with our veterinary practice, which is located beside the creek that feeds the water to Buckeye Lake, Feeder Creek. I want a safe place to live. I want a safe place to work and play. I want to continue to provide our 22 employees with jobs, and I want to provide their families with security. We need to work together to quickly address these issues that affect specific areas of the dam. Why can't we come up with a temporary solution for those areas that are really at risk while we work on a long-term solution. Many businesses around the lake cannot survive even one season without water. Can we have one foot below summer pool? Local businesses are in your hands. The impact on the regional economy is close behind. I trust you to help us all reach a workable solution one that allows our economy to flourish. Don't write us off. Don't make us the endangered species due to lack of water. Don't uh, let us drown in a poor economy. Ask not what your dam can do for you, but ask what you can do for that dam. And remember, raise the water. Thank you. My name is Dorenda G, and I live at 73 Lake Street, Buckeye Lake, which is on Crane Lake, Licking County. Um, I 
moved out to the lake in 1963, so I have the same passion and concern as everyone else in here, but I have a personal concern that I wasn't going to bring up and decided after listening to Karen I needed to. Um, I bought a house in July of last year on the waterfront after uh, many years of wanting a home on the lakefront. I financed part of it, but I did a renovation with a lot of my own money with an agreement with a local Licking County bank that once the house was done, um, they would refinance for me. I moved in 10 days ago, and I received a note from the bank last night. Our appraisers have placed a moratorium on the Buckeye Lake properties at the moment. If you can find someone else to refinance, please do so. So I have a personal interest, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of other people that will as well. Just a real quick announcement. Uh, we do have uh, representatives from the fire department here tonight, and they're uh, keeping track of the number of folks that are with us tonight. I, I just understand that number crossed 470. And I should just remind you that your, uh, your entrances and exits where you came in is obviously an entrance and an exit. And we have an exit back here uh, to the back, which will remain open for the balance of the evening. And if you would, just try to keep aisleways clear. Uh, if any of anybody would need to leave uh, quickly, I apologize for slowing you down, ma'am. <laughs> you know, there's no slowing me down. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, being a realtor for 26 years, I really, my empathy is going with the people that are the landowners, the property owners, and all of you have a huge amount at stake. It is such a shame that a project like this has gone on for this many years. There have been books written about Buckeye Lake, about the Big Swamp, about the Cranberry Bog, which maybe you know or don't know, it's not attached, it floats, it counts on, oh yeah, that's called water, isn't it? <laughs> we need that, but more than anything, we can't think of the lifestyles, as I've heard it put, oh, it's just a lifestyle, the lake, it's an economy. It affects not one county, but three. Doesn't anyone like hear that? And if you can go up and down 33 and build the bypass that I thought maybe I'd never get to see, but I did get to, and it's done, and it's great. But if you can do that and buy homes and fix things and go ahead and go forth, there is no reason on this God's green earth that you cannot go ahead and fix that dam. It's just dirt. Hi, all. I'm Lois Holler, North Bank resident, 3983 North Bank. I've only lived here for 30 years, so I'm pretty much a newbie as far as this is concerned. <laughs> But uh, I mean, you want to say that this report that initially came out was essentially a rehash of the one that was discredited 10 years ago. Be that as it may, uh, this uh, is a total fiasco sprung on us, and it really makes me unhappy. But it was couched in the most uh, inflammatory terms, and I, that's bad. It likely to burst. What is likely? It is likely that a satellite will land in our lake tomorrow too, or an asteroid. How likely is that? Actually, it is not very darn likely that the dam will burst. It might leak on West Bank somewhere, where it's been leaking for 30 years, but it is not gonna burst. If it does burst, you're not gonna get an eight-foot wall of water out of a six-foot body. We need to put water in 
to uphold the economy. Do not take a 100% chance of devastating six to $10,000, six to 10,000 people, businesses, economy, ecology, and everything else for a less than one in 10,000% chance that you will have a leak. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. My name is John Johansson. I live in Perry County, 9429 Lighthouse Cut in Thornville. John, J-O-H-A-N-S-S-E-N. -S -S I just would like to make two comments. First, I think we've heard people talk about property values already and business values. One of the things that I think would be very helpful is if we could have an affirmative and a declarative statement from whoever the authority is that the dam will be fixed so we can put to bed once and for all the amb ambiguity about whether we're going to drain the lake or what, what it's going to be. Just that would give us something that we could take to our banks for refinancing or whatever it might be that says, yes, the plan is to fix the dam. We don't have to go into all the details about how that's going to happen, but some declarative, affirmative statement that that dam is going to be fixed will go a long way in restoring the faith in the community and help us as we begin to go forward with our property values. The second thing is where we live in Perry County, as has already been mentioned, it's very shallow already. And if there's any opportunity that some way we could raise that lake level to three or five feet, something that would allow us to float our boats and allow us to uh, actually use our docks while still preserving the safety and the issues that we need in terms of safety, I would, uh, I would very much appreciate if that would be seriously considered. Thank you very much. My name is Cameron Irvin. I live at 7, 713 High Point Road, Thornville. I want nothing more than what's best for the 3,000 people that would be affected by the dam failing. But if the lake is to be kept at Winter Pool, will not the entire population surrounding Buckeye Lake, not only those in the floodplain, be affected by the West Nile virus carried by mosquitoes that live in such shallow waters? Thank you. Hi, my name's Dave Shepard. I grew up in Avondale. I actually live in Dublin now, but I still have property over there. And the thing that I want to bring up is if you read this report, it says the structural integrity of the dam has been significantly weakened by the more than 370 homes and other structures, et cetera, et cetera. I would submit those homes were not occupied by squatters. Those homes were sold by the state. Those lots were sold by the state. The state approved every utility easement, easement and right of way in that dam. And I think it's worth exploring what legal options all of us has available with regard to liability from the state of Ohio. I've started a crowdfunding website. You can find it on GoFundMe.com, save BL. Thank you. My name is Robert Massone. I uh, live on North Bank. I think that puts me at the epicenter. I'm, I'm one of the trustees of the Buckeye Lake uh, Civic Association, and I'm a new uh, village councilman at Buckeye Lake. So somebody wanted something to bring to a bank. In my bag, I have two things you could bring to your bank. One was an engineering study by the Rizzo Company in 1997, and it said the bank is safe. There was some seepage, and they put monitors in it. The other thing in the bag is the Dotson Lundblom study. Both of these studies paid for by the state to see if the, if the dam was safe. The Dotson Lindblom study of 2002, quote, I quote, says, this lake is safe even at full level in an earthquake. It says that. They monitored the monitors that were put in by the previous engineers and said the seepage hasn't changed. The lake is safe. So I await the Army Corps of Engineers report looking for new data. I'm a scientist. I'm a physician. I'm a scientist. I'm held accountable to evidence, evidence-based medicine. I'm an expert witness a lot. I'm held to account in court. 
for what I say has to be based on evidence and not just my opinion, even though I have all this gray hair. So I looked at this report and there's no evidence. They say they walked it. There's pictures of broken sidewalks and they use this as evidence that the dam's unsafe. And what they did was they took the old studies and they said, we put it in new software modeling programs we have. And the software modeling programs state there could be a breach. But there is no breach. So if there is no breach, full pool it must reach. If there is no breach, full pool it must reach. So we really beg for evidence. Everybody here says, if that dam is unsafe and you prove it to us, we are, look at the crowd that will be behind you. We are reasonable people. But if there is no evidence, then back off and let it go and continue to monitor it. But do not shut it down, affect three counties, as you heard, affect property values, cause a lot of pain up in that area. My, my village of Buckeye Lake is poor, and property values are going to go down. There will be no business there. The revenue into that town will be next to nothing. We have three trailer parks, four food banks, Amen. and we will not be able to sustain the lives of these people that depend on this lake on no evidence. Thank you, sir. Thank you. M-A-S-O-N-E. Trevor Butterworth, as in the sir. Butterworth? <laughs> 3727 South Bank. Okay, I've got pages here. I'm not going to give you what the state spanner is not going to spend. I'm going to give you the good stuff. Yesterday, I went to Leeb's Island State Park office to see why I hadn't received my yearly letter for my boat dock fees. The note on the window states, the office is no longer open. Please call this number or use Dillon State Park. They've consolidated. Okay, so I call the number. Push one, push two, push zero for Buckeye Lake State Park. Please leave your name and number. We'll get back with you. Called ONDR and Morse Road. They finally got me in touch with Jason Wesley at Buckeye Lake State Park, and he informed me which everybody will be happy they're no longer sending out the 3,700 dock stickers this year because of the problem with the lake. You don't have to pay your 80 bucks. Okay, I told them, <laughs> I told them I would inform you people, you're not gonna pay your 80 bucks. Now for the fix. I came here 11 years ago. This is my retirement home. I sold my one in Florida. Bad mistake. Okay. It was 35 bucks when I came here. It's now up to 80. Okay, I confronted ONDR about this increase. They said at the time they were planning to install a 20 foot rock wall 20 feet out from the original dam. In other words, they were moving all the boat docks, coming out 20 feet, grass topping it. You could drive from Leeds Island to North Bank boat ramp. That's what they were planning. So, it was going to be topped with grass. All the funds were being put in the general fund, Morse Road. 3,700 docks at 80 bucks. That's 296,000 a year. Over 10 years, that's 2,960,000. Okay? The staging area is there at Leaves Island State Park and North Bank boat ramp in the parking lot area. The dirt from all the cleaning out of all the spillway channels is sitting behind Feeder Creek right now. It's on Route 37, piled up. It's on Leeb's Island from all the dredging. It's piled there. It's sitting there. It's there for free. They're going to give it away this year. All we need is the granite. The dirt's there. Let's get the granite. Let's put the dirt on it. Let's get it done. Get the trucks. The parking lots are there. Back it in, put the granite up, put the dirt on it, the dam's done. Thank you.
Dave Adams, ADAMS, 2821 Terrace Street, Millersport, Ohio. Um, I'm on the Tour of Homes Committee, and all of us in this room basically have a vested interest in what's going on. Everybody agrees with that. I've heard a lot of things about why things should or shouldn't be done, but I don't know if anybody's thought about the facts, and I've got to address you guys, not you guys. Anyway, if we could maybe go full pool and have no wake maybe in the area of the, of the dam, say from North, uh, North Shore Ramp West. That maybe takes some stress off the dam, okay? While you guys are working on it, this needs to get worked on, okay? But at least let the community have its lake back. The schools, that's gonna be a big, big problem. We already know that the schools are asking for a tremendous amount of money every year. If this happens, they're not gonna have it. The property values are gonna go down, the kids are gonna be in trouble, so we need to think about that also. But we need a solution to get, give us full pool and let, let people live their lives, not just for pleasure, but people have businesses out here, people have reasons to be out here, and please, let's let this happen. Thank you. Merv Bartholow, B-A-R-T-H-O-L-O-W, 95 Delmar Place, Hebron. You know, the state of Ohio began this campaign last year. First, they raised the water level in the lake last summer by six inches up to the top of the Sellers Point spillway. Most of us were pretty happy to have the extra water in the lake, but had no idea what was really going on. Was that action taken by the state to place as much steady, long-term extra pressure on the dam as possible? Then last summer, we noticed all the large evacuation signs that were put up all over the area with no apparent rationale for where they're going. <laughs> then the Army Corps of Engineers were brought out to conduct an assessment and to make recommendations for the repair and maintenance of the dam. And on March 1st, the state left the spillway gate open while waiting for a report from the Corps, a report they had seen in draft form two months earlier. For the past two weeks, they've been conducting a campaign with the media and elected officials to emphasize the danger that exists and the catastrophic impact that will occur should the dam collapse. We have been had. The Army Corps The Army Corps report primarily focuses on past studies and problems that existed with the dam prior to the construction of the Sellers Point Spillway, which was designed to take the pressure off the dam and prevent overtopping. The only problems since 1992 were caused by the failure of the state to include in that project a proper method to get rid of the water that flowed over the spillway, resulting in flooding behind the dam, not through the dam from the lake. There are many ways to correct the problems with the dam, both temporary and permanent. None, however, have yet been considered or discussed during the entire process that has taken place over the past year. Instead, the state has wasted precious time preparing for their disaster announcements, time that could have been used to correct any deficiencies that might exist. In 2004, the state presented a plan to build a new dam 20 feet in front of the current dam. Many parts of that plan were unacceptable to the community and attempts to work with the states to improve the plan were unsuccessful. The state knew best, unwilling to listen to any other ideas. Seems like deja vu all over again. The Buckeye Lake Dam became an unacceptable and unsafe embankment in 1895 when the state of Ohio sold the first section of the dam and allowed structures to be constructed on it. That action 120 years ago has given heartburn to dam engineers since and caused them to declare our lake unsafe. Sir, we, I apologize for interrupting you, but if you would conclude your remarks, I would appreciate it. All right, I've got two sentences to go. Thank you. We must support our local leadership as they attempt to work with the state to reduce the level of hysteria that's been created through their latest campaign we also need to accept the fact that some change has to be made to bring our dam up to today's standards of safety. Thank you. Uh, 
Hi, my name is Dave Horning, H-O-R-N-I-N-G. Sorry, I've got, this isn't going to work real well here. I've got unsteady. Yeah. Um, I live at 3811 North Bank Road. Uh, I, I came up to talk about a report that was mentioned a couple of times by a couple of people in the past. Um, there was a report dated May 5th, 1997, and it's the Rizzo report. And it was a study done, and the purpose of the study was to um, study the dam stability at Buckeye Lake. And the reason that the study was done was because uh, it was noted that there was a breach threat at the dam um, based on um, the wall not being high enough above full pool. So the idea was that um, you want to have your dam, you want to have the top of your, the wall of your dam to be five feet above full pool. And so the interest was in increasing the height of the dam by five feet um, to prevent uh, any possibility whatsoever of a breach in even the most severe flood conditions. So the study was done to determine if the dam itself was stable enough to support a higher pool level, five feet higher. And they did a, they did a, a huge analysis of the materials comprising the dam itself, as well as the permeability of water through the foot of the dam. And this report, and, and it wasn't hard, ODNR did provide this to me, and I had to get it from them because um, I couldn't find it anywhere on the web. There were links to it, but you follow the links and it wasn't there. Anyway, this report is directly in um, opposition to the current Corps of Engineer report. There's a lot more science in this report. It's, it's over two inches thick with tons of engineering data to back it up. Their conclusion was that there is no real permeability through the dam itself and that it does have enough stability to support not only the full pool level we're at here, but a, f a pool that's five feet higher in a temporary basis. So um, I think we're, uh, I think there's been a lot of fear that's been stirred up and I understand that the that ODNR has got to be real frustrated with nothing happening over the years. Um, but uh, I, don't think the, uh, I don't think the threat is a threat from seepage based on these reports. Yes, there is a, somewhat of a threat if we, have, uh, if we have significant rainfall that takes us way above the current pool level, the, the, maximum, the normal pool. But there is way too much fear being connected with this. I think it's for the purpose of trying to light a fire in the legislature. But it's also having the effect of lighting a fire under everybody, and that's just wrong. So I have the report here. Hello, my name is Jason Hand, H-A-N-D. I live at 96 Anchors Way. And I was at the uh, safety meeting yesterday, and uh, the guys were talking about evacuation and safety and lives being lost. And, and I, was, I was wondering, um, you know, if they're so worried about it, why aren't they on the dam right now watching? Why is this guy from ODNR even here if the dam is going to collapse? I mean, seriously, he should be conferencing, calling in on this, number one. If it, matter of fact, at the meeting, they said they had one guy that may or may not patrol the 4.1 mile per day, maybe. So... Are you really concerned it's going to collapse? You got one guy that may or may not be walking the four mile now, the four mile strip. <laughs> secondly, secondly, I moved here because it, this is the lifestyle I chose. Um, they're saying years for this. Every every day this winter, I woke up. I could not wait for summer, and now we have this. My neighbor is 87 years old, and we're going to wait two or three years. Who knows if we're going to be here next summer? I was waiting for this summer. I'm, I'm really sad about this and upset. I appreciate your enthusiasm and your passion, and I just would like to reiterate that uh, it was the Fairfield County Commissioner's Office that spent the last uh, couple of weeks uh, urging ODNR to come and listen tonight. So 
Uh, I want to take responsibility for that, that, that they didn't call this meeting and, and we, we urged them to be here. We wanted them to hear you and I just wanted to reiterate that. I, again, I'm not yelling at you yet. <laughs> Sir, I apologize for delaying you. That's not a problem. My name is Craig Babbert, B-A-B-B-E-R-T. I live at 12552 West Bank Drive, Millersport, Walnut Township. I am a Buckeye Lake Area Civic Association trustee, and I'm a West Bank Homeowners Association trustee. In, the Mar in a March 13th article in the Columbus Dispatch, ODNR spokeswoman Bethany McCorkle said, yes, there have been multiple reports, and yes, we've known about problems with the dam for years. But every time there was a report, there was an equal amount of pushback, if not more. And with every report, there was someone pointing out holes in its credibility. ODNR spent last week telling people how the Buckeye Lake residents are in denial. Other politicians disparage the residents by claiming they think they are damn engineers. Both thoughts demonstrate they do not understand the thinking and motivations of the people that live and work in this area. The pushback comes from our practical experience and fear that ODNR will ram another harebrained idea down our throats, causing more harm than good. As evidence, see the additional flooding caused by the Sellers Point Spillway. See the harm caused by the 1997 spillway at Grand Lake St. Mary's. Do a Google on that one. See the mess they made with changes to the Leaves Island ramps and park. See the efforts to raise the dam that other folks have talked about. If ODNR would work together with the people out here, they wouldn't get so much resistance. The Buckeye Lake Area Civic Association has been trying to work with them for over 10 years. It seems the current administration is tired of the additional effort required to work with people that understand the Buckeye Lake area. Why do you think they brought in the Army Corps? You think it's because they didn't understand the problems? The ODNR spokeswoman just admitted they knew about the problems. It seems ODNR needed to leverage the Army Corps' credibility to roll over the residents. Why is ODNR, ask yourself this, and I would ask the commissioners to ask ODNR this question. Why has ODNR not maintained the dam? The last significant investment in proactive maintenance was done in 1992 and 1993. That's more than 20 years ago. With the new spillway and an upgrade to the old spillway. Their decision to keep the water at an unusable level will result in an economic disaster. Not only the people that live and work here, but also those who depend on those jobs and those home sales and all of the downstream economic activity that occurs. Why have we reached this point in crisis? Is it perhaps because ODNR needs a crisis to get the money and roll over resistance to bad solutions? The people of Buckeye Lake should not have to pay for ODNR's mismanagement. So I have two simple requests. Maintain the lake at a safe, usable level, that is not the winter pool, and work with the people of Buckeye Lake to find the best possible solution that can be implemented in a very short period of time. Thank you. For you folks that are standing, I see there's a few seats that have become available towards the front if folks would uh, like to sit. I'm sorry to have delayed you, sir. Please continue. G-H-I-Z. William Gibbs, G-H-I-Z. Yes, ma'am. Fear. A lot of times can get you change. How much of this report is fear? How much of this report is fact? There's a gentleman from the Corps of Engineers that was quoted in the Columbus Dispatch as saying, in fact, Spore, who is uh, Mike Spore, said there was concerns that the dam might fail in the coming months between when the Corps first was contacted last summer and when the report was released today. If they weren't concerned about public safety then, how can they say they're concerned about public safety now? My name is Matt Bauman. I live at 216 Lakeshore Drive West. Last name's B A U M A N N. Uh, I guess I'm kind of an environmentalist, and uh, I'm really concerned about the 
lake stand down a foot or two, uh, two foot. I mean, a third of the volume of the water's out. And because of this, the fish in the lake, which is the second biggest population of fish in the state of Ohio, second only to Lake Erie, uh, will probably all die. I mean, we'll have a major fish kill. With a third of the volume of water missing, we are going to have horrible algae blooms in August, which are going to cause these fish kills. And I don't believe the lake will recover from the algae blooms. Um, we've been working really hard to clean up the water coming in the lake. We have some great people working in this area. I mean, Buckeye Lake for tomorrow has spent years working on these problems. Uh, I know a lot of you know the people that are in Buckeye Lake for tomorrow. And they, we want to clean the lake up. We've been doing all this work for it for years now. And now, if they, if they do this, I'm really afraid it's going to kill the lake. It's not just going to be the fish kill and the algae. The cranberry bog's going to go. Uh, and I don't think we'll recover. Uh, I think that we can't count on the state of Ohio and that if you live on North and West Bank, you're going to have to do the same thing I do in my yard, and that is if you've got sinkholes, you better get out there and start filling them. Don't count on the state of Ohio. Get out there, cut away the sod, get uh, paver uh, gravel, tamp it down, put another foot in, tamp it down, put the dirt back on the sod back on top. You see your sidewalks are caving in, dig up around it, find out what's going on. You can balloon them back up. Pack it in. We got to take some responsibility. We should fix some of the things like that. And you'll be surprised in some of those sinkholes. They're going to be. They're going to take wheelbarrows full of dirt. Uh, I have 180 feet of frontage, <laughs> and I know. I, I mean, we go out and we take care of it every year. And you got to do it. We we got to maintain our own yards. And the state of Ohio needs to use some common sense. If we got some bad spots in the walls, let's put up some cofer dams temporarily so we can get the level up and save the lake. Because I'm afraid if we don't get the water up a little higher, it's going to be gone. And it's not going to recover. Hi, my name is Robin Thompson, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. I live at 3295 Lakeside in Millersport, Ohio. And I have been through all the floods 67, water spewing through the lake frontage. I've been here when the steel wall was put in, and in 1990, we had the nine inches of rain in five hours. And I am getting tired of being flooded on Lakeside. State Route 360, I've played with ODNR for, since 1980. I've been the energy management I've been through all the Fairfield County commissioners. Everybody's got to stick together. We got to fight this. We really do. It's a problem. It has been a problem for a long time. For eight, nine months, I watched the Licking River, made all how it flooded, how it came up. We were all going to have meetings. I never heard a word. So everybody's got to stick together and we got to get tough. And it does need fixed. And you guys got to quit giving building permits out and letting people put houses into this lakefront if it's not going to work. I don't have flood insurance. Back in the 60s, we never flooded. We had high water. We're down by the new spillway on 360. I ain't sure it works either. Come on, guys. Let's do it. Steve De Bruin, D E B R U I N. I live at uh, 3635 Blackfoot Eastern Road, Lower Sport. Got it. So, looking around the room, I'm glad to see you're all here. I know a lot of you. I uh, own the veterinary clinic of Feeder Creek in Miller Sport. And I, I have a couple issues, and, and one leads to the other. Straight out, I think the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers made this uh, decision last August. And like Merv said, that lake was uh, six inches above normal. The higher the lake is, the more pressure it puts on the dam, the more chance for seepage. My concern is, 
as a veterinarian, if you bring your dog to me and he was hit by a car, I'm going to look at your dog right away and I'm going to say with my experience, this dog needs immediate surgery or we'll x-ray his broken leg, give him a few stitches and he'll be good. What I hear now in this report that was done in August is that these engineers are now saying that we're in fear of imminent collapse and intimate death of people. And if it was that bad, I think as a responsible engineer that day, I would have went over and released the water out of the dam before any people died. I, you know, as an engineer, if you really thought that was a real probable solution, and that should have happened that day or within the next day or two. You should have called up the governor and said, Governor, we have a problem. This lake needs to be drained then. Instead, we let it lay there at six inches above water level for the rest of the fall. So, so that's one thing I'm going to say. I take my animals to surgery right away if they need it. If they don't need it, we work on it. The second thing is, is a lot of people in this room come to our veterinary clinic, and we don't make any money at our veterinary clinic from people coming to the lake directly. But there's a whole lot of people that work at the gas station, work at the local eatery places, the pizza cottage, those kind of places, and they all do come to our veterinary clinic. I'm in the small business association that are around Buckeye Lake, and they're all people like us. We are very small, private businesses. If the lake is lowered even for one summer, most of our small businesses cannot survive to the second summer. There are, there are alternatives. I come from a family of engineers, and you know I'm the black sheep being a veterinarian. But, <laughs> but there are alternatives where we can, we can build like lagoons around those parts of the dam that are broke. If they need repaired and then it's immediate repair, we can let the rest of the lake stay at level. You know, we talked in the Buckeye Lake for the Mar group that even a foot below level would still make it acceptable to have a bar on the lake or, or to have a boat float in the lake. So I, I think it's really imminent that we make sure that this lake gets filled up. Like I said, I, am, I, I guess I didn't say, I'm actually president of the Buckeye Lake for the Mar organization right now, and that lake does not fill much after May. So the reality is, we got to get something done in the next 40, 45 days at the very most, and preferably April's when we get our rain, guys. If I could ask you, sir, to conclude yeah. your remarks, I apologize. Well, I think I'm pretty good. I will say one thing <laughs> is our governor has worked really hard on job creation, and, and this whole thing is like job destruction. Um, most of you have probably done a little research on dams or Googled things, uh, as I've been doing. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of uh, Lake White then in Ohio, which uh, also is experiencing some type of a leak, leakage. So things happen. Um, it's a 400-acre lake, and the state of Ohio is spending $35 million to fix the dam at Lake White. So. You know, like you've talked about, the state knows they have a problem. Um, the state knows how to get money when there's a problem. And we all have to lean hard on our legislators, our representatives. They are our representatives in government. That is their job. They want to hear from you. They want to hear our concerns. It is the political process to uh, you know, let them know your businesses are going to fail, that you, you know, your, your housing values are dropping. Um, pressure, uh, you know, in the, in the appropriate means is the best way to say, hey, uh, we understand there's a problem, you know there's a problem, but uh, there ought to be a, a way we can live and work through it together. And uh, the legislators I've been seeing talking about this say their goal is to find a way that we can do both. And that is, you know, figure out the way that we're gonna repair the dam and also keep our lake uh, operational. And so whatever the level that needs to be to safely operate watercraft and whatever we can do, whether it's 
the, someone mentioned imposed wake limits and you know speed limits, but let us operate on our lake. Let us you know have some form of pool in the lake so that we can keep our ecology, keep um, you know a safe meet meet somewhere in the middle or maybe a little bit higher. That's all. I mean. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gail Bennett. Um, I live on County, or County Road 406 in Thornville. Uh, the last name is spelled B-E-N-N-E-T-T. -T. And I would like to first of all thank all the elected officials for being here tonight. I also would like to thank ODNR for being here. I may be the last speaker up here tonight. So what I want to make sure I feel like is that at the end of the day, today, tonight made a difference. That, th that we came here, you heard us, and it makes a difference. Um, show us that you've listened to us, show that you understand that we're here to make sure our lake is safe, but also prosperous for, for the whole community. And at the end of the day, let us know that you've heard us and you're willing to listen to us and make a difference. Thank you. Folks, this is the queue over here, and right now we do not have anyone in the queue, so is there, if you would like to address us, uh, uh, Carrie will help you there. And uh, if we do uh, get to a point, just give me a minute if you would, please. Sure. If we do get to a point where we uh, uh, feel like we still have the energy to continue on and there are additional residents who would like to address us, I may give the politicians an opportunity to make very brief remarks. And I won't be as kind to them when it comes time to saying that. I'm, I'm kidding. Please continue, ma'am. Hi. My name is Barbara Trump, spelled like Donald without the S and not all the money, but better hair. <laughs> I have a couple of concerns. When my husband passed away, he thought he was leaving me in a great place. I own three pieces of property and you're tanking them. I pay taxes anyway but my property level is going to go down. This is how I continue to support myself. I just got to say that what are you going to do about the fireworks? Is that going to work? Or are we just going to have mud runs? Because if you're talking about taking the lake totally down, that's what we're coming to. We're going to have a fish kill. And this is all people, people before me have mentioned, so it's not anything new. But I'm just thinking, have we thought this over? Yes, for 20 some years, I think we have, since 1989 anyway. So I have a sign in my front yard for the dog walkers that says, you can stand, you can sit, but please don't shit. Let's get off the pot and get this done. <laughs> I'm Mike Grossclose. I own the Buckeye Lake KOA campground. And I came here 12 years ago. Uh, I owned a campground in Mississippi before that. And we moved to Buckeye Lake so that we could be close part of the year and have a little bit of relaxation in, in the middle of our season. Uh, I seem to have found myself on the wrong side of the dam. <laughs> when I hear that you should get a suitcase ready and all your important papers so that we can get out of town in 30 minutes, this is gonna kill my business. People have already heard that, they're already calling, wanting to cancel reservations. We're just starting the season already. You know, we don't open till April 1st, but they're already calling and making uh, cancellation reservations. Sometimes we can talk them out of it, tell them that this is really not what's happening. Uh, can you imagine July 4th weekend and we've got a full campground? None of these people are driving cars that can drive out. If you take that six or 700 people and divide it by four, if we get four in a car and get out, this is going to be crazy trying to get them out of the campground, much less whichever way we go to get away from the water. <laughs> So this is my dilemma, and somebody's got to do something quick. Yeah, my name is Bob Ball, B-A-L-L, -L, and I, I'm here just to present a construction option. 
Uh, I received my address at 13670 King Road. I received a call today from a gentleman uh, who was working on the Zar Zor Levy Dam, Earthen Dam, near up 77, up near New Philadelphia. And he said, well, why don't you guys do the Palmer uh, method? Um, what's a Palmer method? You know, I'm an engineer. He said, it's a process where you blow, put in con concrete chemicals into the dam, and it fill goes to the open area and seals those uh, openings. This is used in the oil industry to um, close the leakage of the oil wells. Now, he worked with Aaron Smith, who is with the Huntington Corps of Engineers, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, Huntington office. So I have his, his this is the minutes about the Zor. Mm. So I'm, I'm giving this to you people to inquire about that process. Thank you very much. My name is Sherry Pimer, P-Y-M-E-R. Um, my husband and I live in Gahanna, but we have a place on 3464 South Bank in Millersport. We currently have two to three inches of water under our dock, so there is no boat to put in the water right now. Um, we've had the place, uh, my husband is third generation owner of the property. Um, his grandfather bought it in 1963, and for the last 50 years, uh, there have been talks about the dam leaking. Um, according to the reports, it has not changed much. Um, quite frankly, I'm a little bit tired of hearing the whole rhetoric year after year after year and trying to get something done if there is something wrong. So I called the governor's office today and I spoke to a man who is over Director Zeringer and he, I said, I think the governor's office needs to know what is really going on and that I felt that the state and ODNR had failed to maintain throughout the last 30 or 40 years. Uh, every year they used to go out when the, when the uh, um, water was low in the wintertime and they would patch the wall and they would go around and they would maintain the wall. They haven't done that in years. And I believe that by them blaming the problems with the wall on houses that were being built there, A, why did they approve them? And B, why did they not maintain the wall? And I thought that the way that the um, announcement came out, every, everything from the uh, Army Corps of Engineers to Director Zeringer at ODNR, uh, using words like, uh, well, I mean, it, it was, it was le such a disastrous thing, everything from what if, a house, uh, what if a house has a gas leak and it blows up and it blows a hole in the dam. Well, you know, I told him today, I said, well, what if somebody goes into the state house and blows it up and there are a thousand people there, you know? Um, you know, a lot of things could happen, could, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. But that I felt that the governor's office should know what is really going on and that the way that it was announced catastrophically has hurt business, it has hurt property values, and something needs to be done now. And he said, well, I have to call Dr. Zer or Dr. Director Zeringer this afternoon on another matter, and we will discuss Buckeye Lake. And I just happened to be having uh, an event with Governor Kasich tonight, and he said, we will discuss Buckeye Lake tonight. So he will be discussing with both people, and um, that's all I have to say. They, they, they know the situation, they know it's dire, and they know it's been overblown. Good evening, and thank you for everything. I'm Jeff Ritter. R-I-T-T-E-R. I live at 15302 Shoreline Drive in Thornville. I married a Thornville girl 34 years ago. We moved from the area in 1981, but prior to that, my grandfather Ritter took me to Sellers Point when I was just 10 years old to fish. Little did my grandpa Ritter know 
that I would end up being a property owner in Buckeye Lake or on Buckeye Lake. We have wonderful family on the lake. We have wonderful friends on the lake. Um, we, we've, we've come back to Ohio. We were gone for 27 years. We came back to Ohio when my wife's mother was diagnosed with Parkinson's and dementia eight years ago. And I said, I want to go someplace fun, honey. Let's look at Buckeye Lake. It's close to Thornville where your mom is. Let's get back close. Let's get back and we can have, an, we can have a fun time. And if we ever became grandparents, which I'm about to be this Friday morning for the first time, we'll have a fun place that the grandkids will want to come and visit us. So that's the legacy of Buckeye Lake. You know, it goes back hundreds of years. Obviously, you've read the stories, you've read the reports. And I just want to have a personal testimonial as to why I'm here because of my grandpa Ritter taking me fishing and because of family being here. And we moved back for family. And now we're on the lake and we love it. And this is my cousin Sherry who just spoke a minute ago. And we used to go to the Pimer Cottage because my grandmother was a Pimer before she married my grandpa. Seriously, true story. You can't make this stuff up. And so you come back and you go, this is life on Buckeye Lake and it's a community. We are a community. Life on the lake, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like life on the lake. We have wonderful friends. We bought a brand new pontoon boat last summer. Good timing, right? I went and I checked the record today. I paid $2,500 in sales tax to the state of Ohio for that boat. I would like that $2,500 directed exactly to this dam, please. And this is not a Jeff Ritter original, but one of my neighbors, and talking to her on Saturday, said, you know, Jeff, it seems to me they build seawalls on the ocean, but they don't drain the ocean to do it. Is there anyone else who would like to address the commission? Jean Bradford, B-R-A-D-F-O-R-D. Um, first of all, I want to say um, that I think the Corps of Engineers did say in an article last week or the week before, there were different ways to approach the problem. So what upsets people mostly right now is the fact that the big bad way is the way that we're getting the message from uh, ODNR. Now maybe they sincerely think that all that's gonna happen, but where we live and we have an old house, we have no seepage. My neighbors have no seepage. Howard and I used to walk to the old amusement park and back, which is quite a distance, can't do it anymore. And, um, we never saw any seepage. So a lot of these people don't really think it's that bad of a problem if we would just fix the areas that need fixing. And I don't, gee, I hope I don't live to eat these words, but I don't think it would hurt to put the water back in the lake, you know, within reason. Then in the fall, start where they think is the most, the, it's the area that needs the most attention and do something about that. Nobody, nobody wants anything bad to happen, but just to have you told all of a sudden that, you know, it's going to become a mud hole and you're going to, well, let me tell you, if I was going to buy a property up there now and heard this kind of information, I wouldn't give you $5 for the place. I mean, what are you going to do there? The only thing you have to do there is the lake, you know, and congregate with the people around you. They're not going to want to be there if it's all stinky and muddy and, well, I, I hope I didn't leave something important out. I hope you get the idea that we just, thank you. Oh, can I say one more thing? I think we've got the best governor in the United States and I'm sure that he will make sure that this gets investigated. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Lee Nelson. It's N-E-L-S-O-N. I live at 13807 Rosewood Road in Thornville. Uh, I'm not a structural engineer, but I am an engineer, and I'm a project engineer. Um, reading the report in detail and understanding the scope of what's here without arguing about it. It seems as though there are short-term measures that can be taken that might allow us to safely raise the level of the water in the lake. For me, that's a high priority. For everybody else here, it's a high priority. Um, beyond that, there are long-term repair stuff that needs to be addressed. My question would be realizing that time is of the essence here for this lake. We can't wait around on this decision. We need like a checklist that tells us how many of the interim risk reduction measures need to be implemented and how many of the operation and maintenance items need to be implemented before the wake, lake level can be brought back up. We're obviously not going to be able to leave the lake dry until we implement the long-term solutions. So I uh, just want to emphasize, from an engineer's point of view, time is of the essence here. Are there any other residents or business owners who would like to address the commission? Uh, Joanne Westlake, W-E-S-T-L-A-K-E, 3652 South Bank Road. I wasn't going to come up here, but you know, I want to save our lake. I remember as a child going to Buckeye Lake, going on the, the rides and swimming in the, pond, the pool. And we, we, my parents used to get a, uh, a cabin out there on, on the, uh, the north side. And I am very upset because uh, 12 years ago, we, had built an old, we bought an old home and then we tore it down and built a new home out there. And I'm like everybody else, I have grandchildren. That it, it's kind of like in between, you know, some of them live in Bremen, some of them live in Columbus. And so we can all get together. It's a place that we can get together and have a good time. They can fish, they can boat. And if, if this continues and, go, and goes on for five years, my grandchildren are going to be grown up. They're not going to come back to grandparents' house. So it's just please save our lake. Not only is it going to affect the businesses, but it's also going to affect the environment, the fish, the ducks, the geese. I mean, if you fill the lake in with the dirt, are you going to plant marijuana there? I mean, I want to know what's going to be filled in. I, I mean, you know, I'm very upset. I mean, someone, someone has a plan for the land. I mean... We I'm, could have order, please. I'm, I'm sorry. Order, but please. You're fine, ma'am. Please I, continue. I, I do want to save our lake. Please. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, I was one of the first to speak, and I'm thinking I'm probably one of the last to speak. So, Karen Cookston, 113 Anchors Way. I referenced that I was a chairperson of the Planning and Zoning Commission out at Buckeye Lake. I've been in that position for 11 years. When I started, I asked the question, does the Planning and Zoning Commission need to treat the North Dam any different than any other construction at Buckeye Lake? I was told no. So when we do zoning, building, anything on the dam, I treat it, the commission treats it exactly as we do any other property because the state told us we didn't have to treat it any differently. As I reflect on that and listen to all you speak, I think this is a time that we have all different government people here tonight and we have the governor and we've got a lot of different years and I still don't hear anybody talking in concert. When you're telling Planning and Zoning Commission that we can do anything we want on the dam, that's scary now that I hear what we've done. So I think it's time that we listen to our governor and all of our different government officials and ask you guys to work together, not in the political cog that I've been involved in a lot of years. It'll take 15 15 years, five years for you guys to shake each other's hands and say, I like you and step across the aisle. It's time now for you all to get together in the next couple weeks and come up with a solution. We're all willing to be part of the solution. And I think unanimously in this room, I think everybody is willing to be part of the solution. But we need you to work very quickly together to help us do that. I know I am raising my hand as I'm gonna ask everybody in the room as an officer in Buckeye Lake Village, I will be the first one to help you do whatever you need. How does everybody else feel? There's your commitment, politicians. Help us quickly. Thank you. Thank you. 
Is there anyone else who would like to address the commission? We're not going to close the uh, opportunity to do that, but I did want to uh, uh, thank my colleagues from uh, Licking County and Perry County who are with us this evening. And uh, I see we have uh, some state representatives here. Are there any leaders at either the county, and I'm going to go up the ladder here a little bit, but are there any leaders at the county level who would like to address the, the residents tonight? President Bob would like to address the community. It's Tim, B-U-B-B, Lincoln -B -B, County Commissioners. You know, honestly, you, you, you really have all said it all in different ways. Um, I think you feel a little deceived because you heard too many mixed messages. I didn't just fall off the turnip truck in Lincoln County. I've been listening to this for a long time as well. We've been up and down around the lake and listened to a lot of these different proposals. Believe me, I, I think we stand united with our fellow commissioners from Perry County that I see there and here in Fairfield County. We're as frustrated as you are because we really feel and we understand the economic impact and how painful it has to, has to feel when you feel like you've had the rug pulled out from under you. I, I hope, and I sincerely hope, that there is at least a short-term solution on the immediate horizon. I understand there is going to be a, an answer for you, at least in terms of the immediate use of the lake this Thursday morning. So my inclination is the decision's been made regarding at least the use in 2015. I think that, you know, it, it was kind of you folks from ODNR to be here today and to accept Fairfield County's invitation to be here. And I think if we had to leave those folks with ODNR, who I think have to leave shortly with a message, I would ask you all just to consider this statement. That as a, you talked about consensus a little bit a moment ago. Would you be satisfied in 2015 and going forward, working with the state to come up with a use of Buckeye Lake that may involve a lesser amount of water, but protects the ecology, which is precious, from the bog to the, um, the fish hatchery to all things that we don't even think about out there. But uh, probably a lesser than full pool amount of water, but an amount of water that allows the lake to be used as a recreational resource and at the same time, hopefully protects the property values and the business interests. And that's temporary use. I think if I had to speculate, I think that on Thursday morning they're going to tell you, get ready to feel good about this. They're get ready to, uh, I think you're going to hear, we're not going to drain the lake. Now, is that a surprise? No, no. This is what you call, the, uh, you got the, the nuclear bomb dropped on you last week. And now when you take the nuclear bomb off the table, then you talk about the real solution. So I would suggest that if, if you had to carry back to Columbus a thought, the thought is that these folks who have a huge investment in the lake and the people and the counties that do, we need enough water in the lake to protect its interests so we don't kill the lake. And at the same time, I think most people in the room would acknowledge if it's a slightly lesser amount of water to take the pressure off that in the interim, if there really is a threat, then that may be a compromise that we all could live with. But I don't think anyone wants a small cesspool of a lake with dead fish in it that dies this summer. And I would ask you if you could support that kind of a, a thought going forward. I'm reflecting on what I've heard you say today. I would ask you simply raise your hand. I think it's unanimous. That's what we're asking you to carry back to the director and the folks at ODNR. These folks are your constituents. They believe in you. They pay taxes just like the commissioners do. And we'd like to see a solution that we could all live with, that we would be comfortable with on all ends of the lake and all the counties. We want a safe lake because, remember, from a Licking County standpoint, we have a lot at stake, too, because if they really mean the dam could fail, we get it. I mean, Fairfield and Perry will be disappointed to lose the lake, but we get it. And that's the difference. <laughs> and, I, and, I, I mean that, and honestly, even though it seems so unlikely, that's a Katrina kind of disaster if you dump the whole lake through a hole there on the village of Buckeye Lake right up wind to Hebron and that whole area. And we don't like that solution. We don't like that outcome either, as unlikely as that may seem. But at the same time, you have to respect that possibility. So I think what we're asking for is a little bit of compromise and reasonableness this summer. And Steve, and I think, I think we all stand together in support of that. And that's the message we've all been carrying as commissioners to the state officials this week. I know that there's been some serious meetings today and there will be tomorrow. And I can tell you at least you're all waiting to hear an answer. And I think there is going to be an answer at least Thursday morning as to what the use is going to be or what's 
predicted for the use this Mr. year. Mr. President, as one kind president to another. <laughs> yeah. These, these are my constituents, Steve. I, I understand. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, Mr. President. Are there any, any other uh, county commissioners or uh, state elected officials who would like to address the, the community? Have a commissioner, please. Jim O'Brien, Perry County Commissioner. Um, happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> uh, I want to thank uh, to the mic. I want to thank Fer Fer <coughs> Fairfield County for putting on this great event. Uh, it's great to hear everybody's voices. We get plenty of calls. All the commissioner's offices get plenty of calls, and that's what we need. We need all those calls, concerns. This is a great venue to put out your frustrations, but also give good solid leads on what direction you want to go. Uh, I had a few people from Perry County and just like Mr. Bubb touched base on, it affects all three counties in different ways. But I just wanted to let to know people from Perry County and all the counties that all three commissioners from Perry County, Fairfield County and Licking Counties wretch out together and we're working as a unit to make sure we get this right. So uh, thanks for letting me speak. Thank you. give our state leaders an opportunity to address us if they would like. I'm not going to call them by name because I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I just don't want somebody to leave here saying, boy, I wish I'd have got an opportunity to address the crowd. <laughs> Thank you for coming tonight, sir. Sure, you're welcome. My name is Bill Hayes. I am representative for the 72nd district, which a lot of you are not in. Uh, I represent uh, Licking County, the southern port of Licking, Licking County, part of Licking County and all of Perry County and Coshocton County as well. I don't think there's too many Coshoctonians here tonight. But I appreciate the rest of you coming. This is a very effective meeting. I'm sure the governor will hear about this. And I really appreciate ODNR being here. It's no fun to come and hear some of the stuff you've said, but they came and listened to it. I really do. I know a lot of you have not spoken tonight, but you can, still can speak. And I really wish you would. And here's how you can do it. Uh, it's not really hard to remember, but if you'll remember REP72, Rep72, that's my email address in Columbus. It's REP72 at OhioHouse.gov. If you would send an email, now don't do the thing they do on Facebook, okay? Here's what they do on Facebook. Everybody send this email. Do not do that. Do not, because once you've seen one and you, then they're all the same, it, doesn't, it has no impact. But even those of you who have testified tonight, if you'd put your story in an email and send it to me, I will personally deliver it to the governor and to Director Zeringer. They need to see your, uh, hear your stories. I really wish you'd do that. I'm going to give you a phone number, cell phone number, 614-419-5346. Call that 24-7. That's Tim Schaefer's phone number. <laughs> That's really mine. <laughs> I just couldn't pass up on that one. But I really appreciate you being here tonight. I know I've used my time. And uh, number again. Okay, th that number again was 614-419-5346. And if you would do the emails to Tim, it's just like mine, only it's 77 instead of 72. He gave me permissions to say, permission to say that. I spoke with one of the governor's aides on my way down here tonight. Uh, and I will stop because I think Mr. Schaefer has even some better uh, news to tell you. He's uh, had another discussion. Tim. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everybody. Uh, State Representative Tim Schaefer, S-C-H-A-F-F-E-R, Lancaster. Uh, 1173 Stone Run Court, Lancaster, Ohio. Uh, I want to say, uh, and Bill, Representative Hayes, great job. Uh, thank you for your work, and I want to recognize Senator Bal Troy Balderson over here, too. Uh, what a fantastic job uh, these guys are doing for their districts, our districts, in the General Assembly, in the House, and the Senate. And uh, I want to thank all of you for coming out and spending your evening here. You probably had other things to do. You've canceled. you postponed. 
uh, we needed to hear this. We needed to hear these stories. Uh, I know Bill and I both got pages full of notes uh, from what we heard here tonight, and I thank you so very, very much. Um, we got to stay strong. All of us got to stay strong to make sure we protect the Buckeye Lake region and the entire economy. And at the State House, I talk in terms of it being the entire economy because it is an economy. It's a community, it's an economy, and it's a key part, as you heard, in all three of our counties. Uh, I just got out of a meeting this afternoon with Governor Kasich, and I can assure you he is personally involved in this issue. He is heavily involved in this issue. Uh, we spent two hours talking in the first hour. We're supposed to be talking on a different topic. The first hour we spent on Buckeye Lake. It was that important to him. And I am very, very confident. In fact, I can tell you he is going to make the right decision. And I'm very confident to echo Commissioner Bubb's comments that I think they're going to do the right thing. And I think ODNR is going to make sure that we're not draining the lake. Um, but uh, you will hear more about that on Thursday as Commissioner Bubb indicated. So again, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, I'll be sticking around as long as you all want to stick around answering questions, fielding questions. I would also ask, uh, just like Bill said, make sure you send uh, any comments, any stories you have, anything you want us to have to help with this situation. My email, I think he said it, and I was talking to somebody, but it's rep77 at ohiohouse.gov or 466-8100. That's been our house number for many generations, so 614-466-8100. Thank you so much. God bless you, and go Buckeye Lake. Uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, it is an honor and a pleasure to be here, seriously. Uh, I'm State Senator Troy Balderson, and I represent the 20th Senate District, which includes Muskingum County, Guernsey County, Morgan County, Fairfield County, Hawking County, Pickaway County, and parts of Athens County. So, thank you very much. Uh, third largest geographic district in the state of Ohio. Uh, I, like a lot of you here, uh, have not, well, I've not spent a lot of time at Buckeye Lake. My family, as some of my friends in here, Dave Kessler, Scotty Durant, Lisa, uh, know that my family farmed. So we had a farm. That was, our, that was my dad's Buckeye Lake and Zanesville Country Club. So that's what we did. And um, I can understand the passion. I can understand the, the hard work that you've put into it and, and want to keep this going. And we are working hard. I've learned some information this evening that I was not aware of uh, uh, going on with this Thursday announcement. Uh, that, uh, going on at 11 o'clock, I guess. So um, we're working with ODNR. Um, I, I have talked with uh, Dave Kessel in the back of the room. I mean, the list goes on and on. We had over 1,000 emails. Uh, we can't emphasize enough of that. Um, I don't know if anybody knows Mark Watson. Mark's my neighbor, grew up with Mark. Uh, so Mark sends me pictures. I have the latest pictures. And uh, they are actually in my folder with tablets that have everything. Uh, I went on the lake last year and, and toured the dam uh, with some gentlemen that were nice enough to do that. Uh, he has since passed the judge, uh, but my email address is balderson at ohiosenate.gov. Phone number is 740-819-2580. That's Governor Kasich's cell number two. <laughs> I'll trump Bill Hayes. Uh, so that's straight down the middle, uh, and you know, we we're, we are trying very hard. We we really are, and um, we know that you are too. I can say 90% of the people, the constituents from Fairfield County, have called and said, "Look, just compromise with us. Work with us here. We'll work with the state. We'll work with DNR. We'll work with the governor and the administration." And I think that's important that you continue that effort. It does. We have to do this together. So thank you very much. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Um, I will keep my comments brief because I think that I might be one of the last speakers here today. So I'll introduce myself. My name is Stephen White. I work for U.S. Senator Rob Portman, uh, who wishes he could be here tonight. Uh, actually, he's in Washington, D.C., uh, doing the good work of the people, and so he asked me to be here in his stead tonight. I work for as his Central Ohio director, which includes uh, Fairfield County. Now, some of you know, uh, Senator Portman, uh, he was just here at Buckeye Lake uh, fairly recent. We've been doing a lot of work with Merv and, and the county commissioners and Dave and others on the algal bloom situation. And uh, Senator Portman has, we 
been working on a number of issues dealing with Buckeye Lake, Buckeye Lake but particularly on the algal bloom. And he was here uh, just last summer uh, out boating uh, with Merv and a few other folks with Buckeye Lake for tomorrow. So we, we're continuing to work with Merv and others on that issue and Buckeye Lake, but this obviously is, a, is an extremely important issue. Now, as was said tonight, uh, this is a state dam, and, and we recognize that. But at the same time, we want to know that if there is a federal role to play here, we stand ready to be helpful, and Senator Portman stands ready to be helpful. He was just in Licking County just this past weekend, sharing that with the folks in Licking County as well. And so I'll be here uh, for the remainder of this evening, uh, and so I'll be in the back here. So if anyone wants to come up and ask me questions or wants to share any information to Senator Portman, I'd be happy to field those. I do know that uh, uh, representatives from Congressman T. Berry and Congressman Stiver's office is here as well, and I know they'd be more than happy to, to talk to folks as well. So thank you, commissioners, for putting together this event today. Thank you for ODNR for being here as well. And th most importantly, thanks to each and every one of you. Um, I think the comments were here that were shared this evening are extremely important. I'm glad that they were voiced. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Sir. I want to uh, just be clear. Um, I'm not in any hurry. Uh, if there's still any resident uh, or business owner who would like to address the commission, I'd like to give you another opportunity to do that. I'd like to give my colleagues, Commissioner Kiger, would you like to make any remarks, sir? Um, I'd just like to say that um, I've been listening. I listened last Thursday. Wait a second, Mike. I listened last Thursday. I listened tonight. And uh, a couple new ideas come up. I got a couple of phone calls today with some interesting ideas also. So um, I think, you know, that's what this meeting is for, is to hear what you folks want to have done. And uh, I understand your pleas, and we'll do what we can. I, I would like to uh, thank everyone for being here and being so respectful. I think that's, uh, that's uh, a very important uh, uh, message we can send to the governor as well as ODNR and we, we want a solution for this and our willingness to work together with uh, each and every one of you in finding a solution that's uh, that'll work you know more importantly we we need to be concerned about lives but also livelihoods and the ecology so all those factors are very important and uh, we recognize that. But again, I, I want to thank everybody for being here. We have a Hello. resident who wants, please, sir. My name is Bill Litton, 517 Lakeshore Drive West. <laughs> well, I've heard all these people talk, and there's a few things that no one has, has fa failed to mention. I've been on Buckeye Lakes since 1982. And I've seen a lot of changes. I've, we've seen people build walls. When, there, I, when I first came, I had a stone wall. Like the man said, every year I'd have to keep putting dirt behind it, rocks and stuff. So then I made an investment by having a steel wall put in. And I've not had any trouble. When I first come out of here, I used to be able to walk from my dock over pretty near to the blue goose before I would ever hit water. Now, since they dug out and made areas for Heron Bay and other places, the water has not been let out. So then what happens? So then the residents have to put bubbling systems in because the water is not going out. So then when you put bubbler systems in, that means the ducks, the geese, I never saw a geese till about eight years ago. They just weren't here. But now that all the water moves all the time, they got a place to feed, they got a place to stay all winter long. <coughs> but if, if I can put a wall up, a steel wall, within one day, there's no reason that this matter continues going on and threatening us residents. Who in here ever thought there would be million dollar homes on Buckeye Lake? <laughs> no one. The lady says she's been out here since 60 something. When I come out here, the only possible close was Wolf Island. 
you know. Then uh, Dave Thomas bought, you know, the island. But then Coconus builds a million dollar home. There's million dollar homes in Heron Bay. So there is a lot of investment here. I mean, I just retired, or not retired, but I sold my house in Columbus and moved out here four years ago. I love this place. This is better than Florida, as far as I'm concerned. You know, I walk 80 feet out to my dock. I got a boat. I got wave runners. It's an enjoyable lake. It's been this way for 30 some years. So why all of a sudden are you putting pressure on the homeowners? There's no reason. And if the water was let out like it was before, those walls could be fixed. It doesn't take a whole lot. I'm not an engineer, but it just seems like there's a lot of solutions that no one is applying to them. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Is there anyone else who would like to address the commission? <laughs> My name is uh, Gene Sherman, and I live in uh, Reynoldsburg, Ohio. And I've uh, visited the lake uh, since I was in high school. I grew up in Pataskla. And uh, that lake will kill you. I was told that when the sewage went in there and I was swimming in Fairfield Beach and some remnants went floating by me. <laughs> so there's been danger in Buckeye Lake. Buckeye Lake is not a pristine lake. It is not uh, like Canadian water and you don't go out and drink out of the lake. It's a mud hole. It's always been a mud hole but it's our mud hole and we love it. It's six feet, I, you've got three foot of water in most of that lake. That six feet's hard to find unless you go to Cranberry Marsh, uh, but it is what it is. We've abused that lake. Who builds on dams? Buckeye Lake and Indian Lake are the only lakes in the state that you build directly right on the shoreline. But it, that's what makes it unique and why people love it and they're neighborly and there's relationships in this, this area. A couple of issues are the only relevant issues. First of all, we heard everybody's heart being poured out about this lake, which, you know, sometimes your brain doesn't work when you love it so much. And then we, the facts that come out, the only facts that come out that are really relevant, a couple of guys, and no one else addressed those, is the guys questioning the, the breaches. Now we've got engineers, two different groups in, in the state, you know, our government, how it works. They've hired a couple of different engineering groups and they've given us uh, engineering reports that we like to, like to have because it supports what we want. Then all of a sudden we got the Corps of Engineers. They're the number one engineering group in the world well, they did a good job down in New Orleans, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but somebody is referred to as an expert. Well, it's like coaches. Whoever has the pen in their hand the last wins when you're drawing offense or defense. So whichever guy gets it, he's the one that's going to win. I don't know the accuracy of the reports. We've listened to all this stuff, and the politicians... <laughs> <laughs> They've uh, given us some positive remarks, but we need action. And the whole deal on this thing is this. Those two guys have talked about the evidence. I've seen the drawings that come out in the newspaper of the Dalgon, uh, what's going to be flooded. What's the one thing that we don't know anything about, and it would help me to accept all of this report, where is that seepage at? I want to see... Where in this dam is that seepage coming from? Now, I know it's abused. You shouldn't be building on there. But what's done's done. And you can find fault with a variety of things. That there's enough blame to be passed around. You know, whether it has to be limited horsepower or what. I don't think there has to be anything done. Who gets a blame on a committee? That's a group of people. you got to be a stand-up guy and say, fill her up. Somebody has to say, fill this lake up and knock the nonsense off. 
because there's all kinds of issues, just like the politicians Sir, I, I say. I apologize for interrupting you, but if I could ask you to conclude your remarks. All right. I, you. I'd be glad to do that. But uh, I don't mean to go too far on this, but I would like to see in the newspaper where this exact uh, breakdown is on the lake. I'd like to take a look at it myself. That would help me to accept it because everybody's uh, like body parts, opinions, everybody's got opinions. And uh, so that's all I have to say. Um, you know, it's an emotional issue, and uh, but somewhere common sense has got to prevail. Otherwise, uh, Dave Levesey and the Boat Boys, the prop business, they're probably hiring, ordering props right now. Thank you, sir. So, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the commission? On behalf of the Fairfield County Commissioners, we want to thank you all for coming tonight. I want to thank you for your courtesy. I want to thank the representatives from the Ohio Department of Natural Resources who are with us this evening. Thank you. I also want to thank our friends in the state legislature and at the federal level. And we will keep this issue on the Fairfield County Commissioner's agenda every Tuesday until this issue is resolved. I'm looking for a motion. I got a motion to adjourn in a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned.